Hello, in this OpenGL video we are going to cover keyboard input. It's ridiculously simple to use a keyboard in OpenGL. You won't be doing it with OpenGL code, you'll be doing it with GLFW which we've set up right here. If you're using something else, I don't know, SDL, SFML, it's pretty easy to do that as well but this is a GLFW tutorial so no point really talking about that. The first thing you want to do is just create a function declaration here so I'm going to call it void key callback this method is going to be called when the user interacts with the keyboard and this takes a few parameters the first one is glfw window and this is just a pointer to the window that we're handling input for now it's int key int scan code int action int mods and now let's just copy and paste this just below the main method ah let's get rid of that I'm pretty sure I disabled my mail client for this video ah, I'm sure I won't get another email in between the time of now and this video finishing. So now that we've got these key callbacks created, at the moment they don't do anything because we need to actually assign the callback to GLFW to do that. Anywhere after you've initialized the window, so I'm just going to put it here, just do GLFW. Yeah. Oh. Slim on mine then. GLFW set key callback. Specify the window. So you just put window here. And now finally specify the function that you're going to be calling back. But this it's key callback. And there we go. So this will call this method right here whenever we interact with our keyboard. At the moment it doesn't do anything so I'm just going to simply just do some C out and I need to include IO stream so hash include IO stream in here I'm just going to do STD C out key so this is the key that has been pressed for now I'm just going to do that. You might be thinking you can't see anything, that's because we're not rendering anything, this video isn't about drawing any OpenGL, so if I click the space key, we get the number 32, if we click A, we get 65, you might be looking at it, especially A, uh, if you're familiar with ASCII A, or 65 is the ASCII code for uppercase A. If I were to try and do let's say uppercase A again because what I actually pressed was lowercase A so keyboard input what we're dealing with in this video isn't really for text input there's a special method for that in GOFW and we'll be covering that in a separate video so if you're just wanting just general keyboard input so if you click the up key the user starts moving for example you click the space key jumps or it enters somewhere then this is fantastic if you want something that requires a bit more precision then you want text input but again like I said we'll cover that in a separate video so now we're just going to detect if a particular key has been pressed so if key equals GLFW underscore key underscore space at the moment if we were to just put a STDC out in here so C out space key is pressed STD and line let's say if I were to just run this as it is and I were to click the space key as you can see it's printed it out several times and the reason is we haven't actually handled the action because there are three different types of actions there is the pressed action so this is only called when the key is 
pressed and it will only get called again for that particular key once you've released that key and moving on there is also a release action which is only called when you have released a particular key and then finally there is the repeat action which is just constantly called while that key is pressed down and that's something you would want to use for movement because you want to want you wouldn't want to keep pressing the key in and out in it you, uh, uh, in and out that's probably not the best way to put it you probably wouldn't want to keep pressing then releasing the key to move forward you might but generally speaking let's say in the fps you keep the up arrow key pressed or the w key pressed the character just fluidly moves so that's where you would want to use repeat and to handle that you'll just do and action equals glfw underscore press so now I'm going to actually you know what a better way would be to do this I'm gonna get rid of this inside here I'm gonna put a switch statement and this switch statement is gonna take action and the first case is going to be glfw underscore press and if we were to press it we're going to simply put space key is pressed the next case we're going to put is glfw underscore repeat so this will be called while the user is holding the key down so for this I'm going to put std, I think I'll just copy and paste it, space key is being held down, break, yeah. and then finally we're just going to do a simple C out for the release key as well, so release, space key has been released has been released so if we were to run that now I'm gonna click a key that isn't the space key so I just oh, let's move it this out the way a bit I just clicked J just clicked A now but watch what happens if I click space as you can see space key is pressed space key is being held down space key has been released but I'm gonna keep it pressed for quite a long time now as you can see it's now only printing space key is being held I'm gonna let go of it space key has been released so let's just trace through this and as you can see for that particular key press that I just did there is only one pressed key because I mean one pressed log simply because we've only pressed it once the several held down log because we kept it held for a long time and then there's one release key because well we have released it now that's it for the most part with keyboard input you can obviously just detect different types of keys being pressed so there's T, tab, all the letters, numbers, you've got key P which is keypad one thing to bear in mind there's also a unknown key and this is basically assigned to key when GOFW doesn't know what key you pressed. Pretty simple stuff. And an example of this will be media keys. So if the user were to press a media key, because different keyboards have these different type of media keys, it's not very standardized compared to I don't know the numbers one two zero or the QWERTY keyboard keys. Therefore, it would come up as unknown. So, if you want to handle that in any particular way, you would you would need to do unknown. And apart from that, everything else is just pretty simple stuff. So let's just undo that. The last thing that I'm going to show you is setting the input mode. So right here. So if I were to put glfw set input mode. Now for this, just put window. The mode is going to be G L F W underscore sticky keys for a value of one and what sticky keys is doing is making sure that this particular event or a particular keyboard event is getting pulled and what I mean by that if we scroll down 
Earlier on in this series, when we were setting up our project, we wrote this piece of code right here, GLFW poll events, which detects for different events and processes them accordingly. So without this, the window won't even load, we won't be able to handle input and all that other good stuff. So what this does is says, okay, we've got a pressed, a key that's been pressed, and as a result, we've got the key callback set, so I'm going to call this method but in a scenario where let's say a lot of things is a lot of things are going on in your application you're pressing a lot of keys at the same time and you press the spacebar key down and you want to handle the pressed event for spacebar but because of, there's a lot of stuff happening that event does not get pulled before you release the space key and what will happen is it won't ever get handled in that particular scenario. So to get around that, if you enable sticky keys, what it basically says is space key, for example, had been pressed, and this is the particular state for this particular key. This state is not going to change until you handle it. So if, for example, pressing a lot of keys and we press the space key, we release it, but the event hasn't been handled yet, the pressed event for the space key will still be there until it gets polled and we actually handle it in using key callbacks. That's just something to bear in mind. So most likely you will want this enabled. That's keyboard input in OpenGL using GLFW. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on our education platform, sonarlearning.co.uk forward slash questions.php. There'll be a link in the description to that. Plus there'll be another link in the description to the source code from this video. You might also be thinking, why didn't we really run it after adding this code? Simply because we're not really doing a lot at the moment, so you won't actually see the difference. But I've explained it so you understand the importance of sticky keys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and leave us a comment. And as usual, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.